Hello, I'm Ron Fox for Get Woodworking and we're going to carry on talking about routers and some of the things you can do with them. I have gone right through the thickness of that piece of MDF and I've cut a very shallow groove in the surface of this MDF. Now I leave the slotter exactly where it is and what I do is to switch off the router and then I'm going to change the cutter for a cutter which happens to be a 3 8 one and this will give me comfortable clearance for the head of the screw that I'm going to use. So, remove one cutter put the next one in now when I place the router back on with the guide bush in that slot again what it will do is to lay that wider cutter exactly symmetrically over the narrower slot that I have just cut. Which means that if I set the depth of cut to a very shallow depth, just enough for the head of the screw, and perhaps a washer. Let me do that first. You will see that I have a slot which has been counter slotted symmetrically with the wider cutter. So I've got the larger diameter cutter in. I've reset the depth to just two or three millimeters thickness of the head of the screw. Away we go to exactly the same pencil marks as before. Switch on. off, release the plunge, let the cutter stop, stand the router down and apart from a bit of cleaning up we have got a slot which has been counter slotted. I can remove this now and just to clean the slot here we are Now you see, a perfectly symmetrical slot all the way through to the material to take the shank of the screw, a wider shallower slot exactly symmetrical over the first one to recess the head of the screw so when I'm using this I can have the router base on there without fouling the screws that hold it. Well let's sum up then what we have done. Remember this is going to be the simple jig for cutting a recess for a three inch butt hinge in the edge of a door. To make it a bit more versatile we want it to be adjustable so that our batten that's going to position it on the door and which we will use to clamp it to the door can be moved across to allow for the thickness of the door. So what we did, we started off our routing stage with some straight edges. We drew the outline that we wanted, rough cut the three-sided aperture out, used the straight edges taped to the pencil line to go in with a flush trimming cutter
a template trim cutter with the bearing over the top that cut that aperture exactly to the taped edges of the straight edges. And that's the crucial bit that is going to cut the recess in the edge of the door to take the hinge. But in order to make it adjustable, we did something else before putting those slots in. We took our straight edges again. We took another piece of MDF. It could be ply, it could be timber, whatever. MDF is cheap and apart from the dust, it's stable and easy to work. What we did there was to cut a slot very accurately by penciling it accurately rough cutting it. I used a band saw but you can use any saw you like. Taping the straight edges to the pencil lines with a little bit at the end to fill in and then with our flush trimming cutter we went through there and we trimmed it exactly to the width so that it became a snug fit for the guide bush for which it was made. In other words, a 20 millimeter guide bush. We then, to finish it off, glued a piece of batten with a straightforward rubbed joint across there, checking that it was at right angles. And that simple device enables us to take anything like this that we want to make adjustable and first of all cut a slot all the way through it then secondly superimpose a wider slot exactly symmetrically over the top shallower to act as a recess or a counter slot if you like to put it that way to take the thickness of the head of a screw and any washers that we might use and the way we used that was to place our board down with the center line of the slot marked. We clamped our slotting guide over it with the center line down the middle lined up with the center of our slot. We took a cutter that was the diameter we wanted to give clearance to the shank of our screw. We went down a little at a time with that slot keeping the router with its guide bush on strictly on the straight and narrow, straight up and down, working to pencil marks. Having cut all the way through, and you can see you need a sacrificial board or a sacrificial table when you are cutting right through. You don't want to take lumps out of your posh Scandinavian bench. So on our sacrificial table, we cut all the way through to make the initial slot. We then left the jig exactly where it was. We left the guide bush exactly where it was, but we took this narrow cutter out and we put in a cutter whose diameter gave us the width we wanted for the head of the screw. We then reset the depth of cut to just two or three millimeters deep or whatever the thickness of the head of your screw might be. Put it back in the slot. The slot kept the guide bush on the straight and narrow as before. We went straight up and down to the same pencil marks. And the net result of all that was that we overlaid that first through slot with a wider, shallower slot that's exactly symmetrical to it. All done with a little bit of MDF with a slot cut in it to take whatever diameter guide bush you want, which in practice means usually whatever diameter guide bush came with your router. So we can see the beginnings of building our router up into a complete woodworking system without spending a great deal of money on materials or commercial jigs. With the aid of some simple straight edges, we can make simple cuts, but cuts which have got to be exact. With those same straight edges, we can cut a slot in a piece of MDF that will exactly take your diameter um, of whatever guide bush you've got to use, which in turn will keep 
that router exactly on the straight and narrow because as it goes up and down there that guide bush is running against the edge of the of the two edges in fact of the slot and so by doing that we can make sure that we steer our router absolutely exactly up and down and we can make the first slot then we can change the cutter reset the depth and we can counter slot that slot which means then we have the ability to take our piece of batten that's going to be used to clamp the jig to the edge of the door couple of screws with little washers under them through there we have got an adjustable jig and that form of adjustment with a slot which is counter slotted comes up again and again in routing you'll find you're using it all the time and all you need to be able to do it is a bit of MDF with a slot cut accurately to be a snug fit for whatever size guide bush you're going to use and we use the straight edges for that so if you've got those you can make that if you've got those you can also make that if you've got that you can make that and we're beginning to build up a routing system